Hey guys, welcome to my newest DIY wedding dress video. I will be showing you guys the beginning stages of making this gown. And this video is also sponsored by Couture Lace, but more about them in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get on to the video. Okay, so to start, I am going to steam my petticoat. I've got this huge petticoat and I've taken out um, some layers of the boning here because it was just too much. Too much food. Um, so yeah, I have to get layers of boning and lots and lots of layers of tulle and it's still huge. So I'm going to start by steaming it. This also has a train. I got it from Coco Melody, it was like $60. Um, I got it a long time ago. So I'll, if I can find it, I'll link below to it. But I'm starting with this because my skirt is gonna lay on top of this. So we wanna start with this on our dress form to make sure that um, we're drafting our skirt pattern and the right, uh, to have the right fullness to compensate for this big petticoat. I've already drafted the sewing pattern for the dress that we're gonna work on. I did it off camera just cause it was, it was annoying, okay? I may insert some clips of um, me drafting the pattern to overlay me talking in here, but um, the, the pattern is already drafted and I've already mocked it up and uh, it fits me really good. I made it to fit me and not my dress form. So it'll be a little bit big on the dress form where we're going to um, do a lot of like of the applique work and things like that. But yeah, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the fabrics that we're gonna be using and then get everything cut out. For all the materials that I'll be using for the dress fabric wise, um, obviously we still need some notions and I'll go over that more materially, but look at this lace y'all. And this lace is a little bit on the high end side, so I do only have two yards of it, just in case you guys are following along with me. And I am also using this beautiful glitter tool um, as the base overlay, and then this will be overlaid over that. This is gonna be so pretty, guys. And I'm just using my basic um, stretch satin that I get from Joann's by the bolts. I buy it with the Joann's Plus. And this is what the top looks like. I get it in Snow White. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out my fabric and I use the same fabric all the time. So I have scraps of it. So instead of opening a new bolt of it, I'm actually gonna use the scraps that I have um, to cut the dress out. So I'm just laying the fabric out and I'm also laying the tool over it and I'm just gonna cut them at the same time and yeah to make it easier i'm not going to do a whole bunch of talking like via voiceover on this because um i have strep throat y'all my throat hurts really bad so all of my pieces cut out i cut them from a layer of satin and also a layer of the glitter tool and then i've got my back pieces cut from shaper mesh and nude i wish i could have got it in a darker color to match my skin tone but all they had was like a beige nude. So that's what I got. And then I also have my mesh insert for the bust area cut from a uh, tool. This is also a new tool. And I've cut two of them because I'm gonna layer, I'm gonna double, the la double it. I use my um, mock-up pieces to cut uh, as pattern pieces. And I made all of my adjustments to my mock-up pieces, like you can see a little dart zone here, things like that. And that is the oven for chicken nuggets. Right now, they put something in the bowl to keep the diaper. This triangle here, like the pecker makes it kind of long. Shampoo. Shampoo. And the monkey's diaper? So I'm gonna start by doing my normal batch processing. This is how I can get a lot of wedding dresses done within a short amount of time, it's because I batch process. So what I'm doing pretty much is I'm going to go ahead and pin together all of the pieces um, in stages, obviously, but I'm pinning together all of the pieces. Like here are the bodice pieces. I'm gonna pin all the bodice pieces together and then I'm gonna pin all of the bodice um, overlay pieces together. I'm gonna to set those aside. And then I'm going to pin all the skirt pieces together and do the same thing. And that really helps me uh, do this very quickly. Now, really quickly while I'm doing this, um, I want to show you guys how I get my princess seams really smooth. So I pin the top and the bottom 
after I've done all of my snips that you guys just seen uh, a little bit ago, I pin the top and the bottom together, and then I ease the fullness in between um, to create a nice, smooth uh, princess seam that you see here. And then every time before I go and sew it, I, I'm obviously checking my princess seam to make sure there's no puckering or anything. So I'm gonna do that for all of my bodice pieces, including the overlay pieces. And then I'm going to pin together my skirt fronts and then my, fr my skirt backs. And now I'm over at my sewing machine and I'm going to sew all of the seams that we previously pinned. Always make sure to iron all of your pieces and I'm snipping all of my curves seams as well. I had um, a subscriber tell me um, that I should be using a pressing cloth when pressing the face side of my fabrics and thank you, I forget your name. I should have um, <laughs> looked for your name before I, before I recorded this but it really has helped my fabrics become more smooth. Now, um, since I have all of my pieces ironed out, now I am going to assemble um, my fabrics at the waist seam. So I'm just starting at my, um, my princess seam here. That's the most important thing. You want your princess seams to line up and I'm gonna place a pin and then I pin outwards. And then I am measuring 5 eighths of an inch in from my um, center front on my bodice and I'm placing a pin there and I'm just going to pin straight down. The reason why I'm not going to sew that 5 eighths of an inch additional down is because I need that seam allowance for when I go ahead and line it. And now I'm gonna sew my side seams of both my face layer and my overlay. And I don't know why y'all didn't tell me that I put this on here upside down. I had to unpick all of my seams and re-sew my side seams right side up. And I'm doing the same thing here. So at the top of my waistline, at the side seam of my skirt back, I'm measuring down five eighths of an inch and I'm placing a pin there and I'm lining that up to my waistline seam because once again, we need that seam allowance to attach our, um, our back mesh piece. Now it's overlay time. So I am pinning my base of my dress to my dress form and I'm going to overlay the glitter tool over the satin while it's on the dress form. You wanna do it while it's on the dress form or on your client because it makes it easier um, for you to judge like whether or not um, your pieces line up or if they don't. You don't wanna do it on a flat surface because you will get some puckering and you will be upset. Um, so make sure you're doing it on a dress form. Do we 
And I'm just gonna take it over to my machine and quickly baste around all of the edges so that my overlay and my base are now one. Now it's time for probably the hardest part of making this dress, which is not hard to make at all. I'm using the shaper mesh, like I said earlier, and I am going to um, place it here at my side seam first. Now notice that the shaper mesh is smaller than the, um, the back skirt, and that's because we're gonna have to do some serious easing to get it on there because it actually has quite a bit of stretch. So what I'm doing is just pinning it to my side seam first, and then I'm trying to figure out where my waistline seam is in comparison to the bottom of my mesh panel. And I'm gonna grab about 5 eighths of an inch up from the bottom of the mesh panel, and I'm placing that um, kind of aligned with my waistline seam, and then I'm gonna place a pin there. And then I'm going to ease the fullness in between um, my top pin and my bottom pin, like we do, I'm easing, easing, easing. I think that's probably gonna be like, the word of the video, easing. Um, but yes, yeah, so I pin that all the way down. I do that on both sides and then I sew and then do a back stitch right there at your waistline seam. Now that that's done, what we need to do so that we can pivot it over to get, get it to the back of the dress is you need to snip up at a diagonal towards that seam that you sewed. Please do not snip into your seam because it will unravel, okay? So snip up only on the mesh um, part and then you pivot it um, so it's onto the back skirt and you place a pin and then you just have to stretch that fabric so that it meets to the uh, to your center back and then place a pin there and then you just have to ease it down your center back <laughs> yeah so just ease it the easiest way for me to ease is you pull it very tight and then you place a pin in the middle and then you pull it tight again and place a pin in the in your new middle and just keep doing that so you don't have any place to place pins and the more places that you put pins the easier it is to actually sew on your machine so keep that in mind um, don't try to skimp out on your pins make sure you're using a lot of pins to make sure that your easing is very even and even even easing makes it so that uh, there's no puckering in the finished seam And then to relieve some of that tension, you wanna snip up into that corner, as well as clip, um, put some snips all the way down um, your waistline seam in the back. That will help it kind of spread and, re and release all of that tension from you sewing a stretch fabric to a fabric that doesn't stretch that much. Now this gown is gonna have a very simple boning structure to it, and I'm gonna do a more in-depth video on it uh, pretty soon here, but I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm doing for this dress. So I'm placing my boning starting at the underbust, and I'm going down, I believe it was about seven or eight inches below the waistline, um, and that's where I'm stopping my boning. And I'm only boning the princess seams here. And then I'm going to add my cups, as I usually do. And I've noticed that doing it this way makes a nice, smooth silhouette in the front. And it also gives a perfectly round bust shape um, at your princess seam, uh, at your bust line. And I really enjoy doing it this way. I decided not to put boning at the side seams or anywhere else because I just think it wasn't necessary. The reduction that you get from that shaper mesh is just enough to where you don't need any extra boning. So why waste materials? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so we've already got, we, I think I recorded some of the cups in. I've got the boning. I'm only going to line the prince, uh, bone the princesses for now. Uh, we haven't done our mesh panel in the front because I want um, some of that lace to be caught up in this seam. So I'm just leaving this as is. But right now I want to test how it fits. So I'm gonna close it in the back. Um, so I'm just gonna sew up this little back seam here. I'm gonna sew with the regular seam and then I'm going to still put the rest of this together and baste it all the way up so I can put my zipper in. So as I said earlier, this video is sponsored by Couture Lace. They are a lace and bridal fabric store based on Etsy. They also have an Instagram and I'll link them below in the description box. They specialize in beaded couture style high-end lace fabrics and appliques inspired by couture wedding dress designers like Payless Couture and Norma and Lily. They also offer custom beaded lace fabrics, appliques, and bridal capes. For my designers, they offer wholesale pricing when purchasing um, fabrics by the bolt. Couture Lace is one of the two lace suppliers that I purchase lace from for my business, so I know firsthand how their uh, dedication to providing high quality fabrics is unmatched. Go ahead and check them out, and let's go ahead and get back to the video. Okay, so I'm in the process of draping the fabric, excuse my mess y'all, draping my fabric, the fabric onto the dress form. Come on, Naya, goodness gracious. And um, it has a black zipper in here right now because this is just a temporary zipper until I um, go get a zipper that matches the color of the mesh. But anyway, so yeah, I just have it draped onto there and then I, there's two panels. There's a front panel and a back panel and I'm kind of doing like applique seams here. Um, and you can kind of like trace with your eye where the pins are. That's where the, uh, the, seat, the side seam actually is. And then I'm going to cut off all of this trim here at the top so that I can catch all of this into my lining seam. And then I'm going to reapplique just the top bit of the trim on the top of the whole thing. I still need to put my mesh panel in here, but it's starting to look more like what it's supposed to look like now that I've got these pieces on here to do, uh, to get my lace uh, around my bust area. It's pretty simple. It's just pretty much like a dart, right? So I cut around one of the appliques. Really? I cut around one of the appliques and then I fold the fullness under and kind of pin it. You see where the pins are here and that's where the dart shape is. I've cut some extra, like um, when I was overlapping some of the seams, there were some extra pieces of lace, some extra of these 3D motifs here. So I will be adding those here to the neckline to add more of an even amount of um, flowers because notice that this side is a, it's a little bit more beading and lace heavy than the other side. So I'll be adding more um, lace. So yeah, I'm, I might film a time lapse of this or not. So while I have you guys here, I just want to address a question that's asked to me all the time. Yes, I am a custom wedding dress maker and I do take custom orders. You guys can follow me over on Instagram um, to see my work, but I am currently taking orders. I'm booked up until May of this year with weddings, but due to the virus, um, some of my weddings have been pushed back, so I do have some open availability. I would appreciate if you guys actually sent me emails and not put it uh, down below in the comments because it can be missed. So I just added a um, matching new zipper to this. Ooh, it looks so good. I have to hand finish it this. Um, and then I added the mesh here. I hand sew it because there's some beading up in here. And then I took some of the beading out of the, um, the seam and saved it because I'm going to re-add it later. But it looks so good, guys. So what's next is... Finish basting the back, um, and then finish hand sewing this bit. And then I'm gonna come back when we work on the skirt portion of it. So when I start working on the skirt portion, I'm gonna put the petticoat back on the dress form, um, 
so I can figure out the fullness of the skirt and then I'll show you guys all those steps too but it looks really good and this lace is just gorgeous when I hand I still got to do some here but when I hand sewed it I tried not to tack down some of these leaves that are like 3d I tried to just make sure only to tack down the parts that were actually um, down originally so yep yeah.